Hello everyone, good evening. Um, welcome to IELTSmaterial.com, day 9 of our free uh, 30 days batch, the crash course for IELTS preparation. And uh, we will start in a few minutes. We're just expecting a few candidates to join. And before that, if I can have, uh, you know, just a brief answer, a short answer. How many of you are for IELTS General and how many of you are for IELTS Academy? If you can write this answer in the chat box, then I'll come to know as today is the last class of listening module. From tomorrow, we are going to start the writing module. Okay. So um, first we would be starting by writing task one, which is academic. Uh, academic writing task one. Oh, many academic students. One, two, three, four, five, six. Manisha, general. Okay. Academic. Fine. So we have majority of the students academic and then academic. Again, academic. Okay, so majority of the students are academic and definitely you will be uh, learning first about uh, academic writing task one. And uh, And after that, we would be starting general. So for four days, that is, um, for four days, we would be taking forward with writing task one academic. And you all know that writing task one of academic is report writing. Writing a description about the graphs and um, the process diagrams, the map and the multiple graphs. So we'll be doing that. And today is the last day for listening module. And today, as I said, I described yesterday that we would be doing the second part of the completion task. That is the other uh, question types of completion task. Yesterday, we completed summary, uh, summary sentence and short answer questions. And today we are going to focus on forms, notes, and tables. So these are the other categories which we would be uh, focusing today. So let's start the class today. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yesha and I am a senior IELTS trainer with IELTSmaterial.com presenting to you the 30-day batch for the preparation of IELTS general training or IELTS academic. And uh, today is day nine the last day of listening module. And I hope you must have learned a lot from these nine days related to reading and listening. And from tomorrow, we are going to start with writing and we would be completing the 30 day batch with speaking. Okay, so, and all the best to all the candidates who must have taken up the date for the examination or many of you, must be uh, going to attend the examination in the near future, that is by next month. And definitely you would be, uh, you know, you would be uh, getting a lot of information from this webinar. So all the best for your exams and all the best for the preparation. Let's start today's presentation. So as I said, as I described, today we are going to do the second part of completion task where we would be focusing majorly on notes table and forms. Now, coming to the main description, uh, where do you find the forms? Majority of the times, in which section do you find the forms? If you can give me the answer. If you can give me the answer, where do you find the instruction saying that complete the forms below? Yes, exactly. So uh, it comes in section one, where you have 
two people communicating with each other one who is actually um you know asking a few questions or seeking information looking for information and the other one is giving the information specific information and wherein after giving the information there comes the completion of the form that is now they are going to take the personal details so name phone number email id uh, house address map is not done in this section a uh, map we did on i guess it was on day 6 uh, ravinder i'm really very sorry we did maths and mcqs multiple choice questions on day 6 and i'm really very sorry if you would have missed the uh, maths i'm so sorry you can just go to our youtube channel and make sure that you watch the video of day 6 where we explain about the strategies of um, uh, sorry strategies for listening module that is related to mcqs and map making we did that okay we already completed that yeah thank you so yes uh we'll just come back to the description and uh, section 1 majority of the times it happens that form completion comes in section 1 okay and note completion can be anywhere it can be in section 2 it can be in section 3 and majority of the times you would find summary completion sentence completion in section 3 and section 4 so uh, i would say 65% of complete question types is covered by uh, completion tasks that is fill in the blanks and when i talk about table completion then generally table completion comes in section 2 where a person is giving the information related to you know different courses or workshop or talking about different activities so there they uh, take up a table and they describe the different activities what would be included in the activities and what is excluded or the targeted audience or the date or time when the activity would start all those things but given in a table so now as i said 65% of your question paper will contain uh, fill in the blanks okay so majority you should focus on fill in the blanks i'm not saying you should not focus on the other question tasks but if i consider 65% then almost 25 questions i've already covered so my target is to cover 15 questions which will be contributed to different question tasks like multiple choice or it is map labeling or it is matching the information so focus on the spellings here i come to the end part the conclusion is focus on the spellings even if you know the correct answer and you have written it with incorrect spelling then your answer is going to be wrong so you should focus on spelling which is very important so don't miss out that try to learn different spellings as much as sorry as many as you can and also focus on the pronunciation because when you are uh, uh, you know when you are attending form completion you might have to write the name and many times it will happen that the speaker would actually give his or her name the pronunciation would be different the letter pronunciation will also be different so that is their phonetic sounds or i would say the sound pattern is completely um, uh, you know is completely different from ours so you should focus on that as well so focus on pronunciation spellings and also the word limit the instructions that is given just make sure that you are writing the answers in the correct format that's it okay now many actually ask me question that uh answers should be written in small letters or in block letters all the letters should be written in block letters or small letters my answer would be write in block letters but if you are writing in small letters just make sure that you are writing very clearly like you should not mix and match two or three letters in the same word which may be considered as incorrect spelling so the point is handwriting should be clear the write up should be clear and the words or sorry the letters should be properly presented and this is the best way to 
uh, write the correct answer. So it doesn't depend on writing in small letters or block letters. It depends on the clarity. Clear? Now let's start today's class. And um, today's class, I would just repeat the same strategies that we did yesterday. We focused on the main strategies of um, listening completion task. The first thing is read the questions properly. Again, I would repeat section one, section two, and section three will have some time in between the questions, a few seconds, I would say 30 to 45 seconds to read the questions, to read the next set of questions. So what you should do is you should utilize that time properly, read the questions, mark the keywords before and after the gap, or for example, if it is form completion, make sure you are finding out or predicting the answer, what would be there uh, you know, in that particular gap or what can be expected in that particular gap. Is it going to be the name or it is going to be the location, time, date, uh, day, also the day in terms of Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, what is it going to be? And then you also write the, uh, you know, write the answers according to the word limit. So I would say do not stress a lot on the strategies. Basic strategy that you need to focus is read the questions properly, mark the keywords, write uh, that is before and after the gap, and then predict the answers in terms of grammar, and then look for or listen. Listen for specific information. That's it. Write according to the word limit. Do not focus on any other points. These five things, these five important things would definitely help you give correct answers for uh, uh, gap fills or fill in the gaps. Okay. Now today we will be focusing first on note completion. I've taken uh, all the difficult tasks, as I said, majority I've taken all the difficult tasks because uh, participants, they requested that they want difficult tasks and that is what I've done. I've made sure that I take the questions from the ALS material and I present it to you. You should be able to listen to the uh, conversation properly, answer the uh, questions. And as I said, the first task is note completion. Let's just mark uh, the keywords for note completion. I'll tell you very clearly how we are going to find the keywords. And this would be only one description that I would give because already we did uh, you know, a detailed description of how should we actually take up the um, actually take up the keywords and do the strategies, uh, strategical find out. Okay. Good evening, Jasmeet. So sorry. Okay, I'm just closing the chat box so that I can, you know, give you the keywords properly. Uh, just a minute. Yes. So let's focus on the First thing that is instructions. The instruction says no more than three words or a number. The meaning of or a number is you cannot take a combination. Either you can write words or you can write a number. Okay. Now, first thing that they would talk about is safety. This will go in the sequence. So the first thing they are going to talk about is safety. No deaths. They would say there were no uh, deaths or there were no accidents and uh, this is a very good thing fortunate thing is that there were no deaths since it's launch in so when we talk about launch it is definitely going to be the going to be the year a number okay so here we will be focusing on here the number okay so focus on here next is they will be talking about speed right holds world train record for what holds the train record for what okay for what situation it is holding the record and uh, they will also describe an example say uh, uh, giving very clearly about nozomi's faster speed is 300 km per hour so this is the example they would give now it can be a situation that they might talk about the example first and then the description so it doesn't matter Focus on the main area. You know that they have given an example. If they give the example 
first uh, that's perfectly fine then you should be more attentive to listen to the train record to listen to the train record okay next is punctuality now all bullet trains for one year were a total of dash late when they talk about late they definitely are going to talk about the time so how long it was late so it can be one hour or it can be 60 minutes they can they can describe it in this way one hour 60 minutes and they are going to talk about the average average time where the train was late so uh, average time could be one hour 60 minutes or it can be uh, 15 minutes or they can also talk about seconds you need to focus on that because when we talk about late it is actually going to describe about the time okay next they will definitely talk about this it's not that there is no blank and they won't be talking about this but don't get distracted at this point so this complete thing is distractor okay because here they have not presented any blank and you may get distracted because the description may go a bit longer and you may uh, you know get distracted and you just lose your focus and then you will not be able to focus here okay the next one is you will be listening to services the last part that is services so there are three types of trains that they started nozomi hikari and kodama so they are actually describing about the function but what is the function the stop okay as we say uh, we have many buses running in our own cities but the frequency is less or uh, you know there are few buses to this area or it doesn't stop at all the places it doesn't stop at all the location so they may be talking about this they are talking about the stops how many times it stops or where does it stop so listen to that here uh, it is given at okay so when they are talking about at definitely it is going to be location okay so it might be the name of the location or they may uh, uh, they may describe that it actually stops at each and every location or every spot. Listen to that. Okay. So when you come to at, stop at. So when it comes at, either it is time or location. But here, at this particular point, we will be focusing on location. Clear? Now, let me take you to the next slide. I'm not going to erase anything here. I'm going to take you to the next slide. Next slide contains 30 seconds. Your time starts now. When, you, when this particular timer is zero, I would start the recording and you should give all the correct answers. Clear? Please focus on the key features that I've underlined. Okay, the time is up. I'm going to start the audio. Open by a student. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Okay, you might have some time here as well. So that's okay. Focus on the content. And then when the audio starts, please give the answers. Not the audio starts. Once the audio gets completed, give the answers. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I would request, please don't scribble on the screen. It's not allowed. Please don't scribble on the screen. Good afternoon, everyone. In today's seminar, we're going to continue listening to different students giving us a presentation on the subject of their term paper. Now today is Hillary's turn. So what are you going to talk about today, Hilary? Well, some of you will know that I was brought up when I was young in Japan, and I'm going to do my term paper on Japan's bullet trains, which have revolutionized their rail industry. Japan's main island, Honshu, is covered by a network of high-speed train lines that connect Tokyo with most of the island's major cities and Fukuoka on the island of Kyushu. Japan's high-speed trains are called Shinkansen, but are known to us as bullet trains. The Japanese bullet train system is credited with being the world's first purpose-built high-speed railway. 
and the model and inspiration for all other similar type systems running today, such as the French TGV. The reputation it has earned for safety, speed and punctuality is unsurpassed. I'd like to give you some figures about that. As regards safety, there has never been a death on the bullet train system since its inception in 1964, other than that caused by deliberate passenger misadventure. As far as speed is concerned, the bullet train holds the current world record for the fastest average speed between two station stops, which was 261.8 kph between Hiroshima and Kokura. The train travelled 192 kilometres in 44 minutes. This record is from the 500 series Nozomi trains, running at a maximum speed of 300 kilometres an hour between Shin Osaka and Hakata. I'll talk more about them later. The punctuality puts European train services to shame. Most trains arrive at their destination after several hours to within the second. In one year, the total time that all bullet trains were late by was 12 seconds. This statistic is hard to believe, but it would be difficult to prove otherwise, and that's what the rail authorities in Japan have told us. Now I'd like to tell you a bit about their history. The first bullet train was introduced in 1964 by Central and West Japan Railways for the Tokyo to Osaka route. Most of these old trains have now been discontinued. There have been several bullet train models since then. The most recent ones have been the 300, 500 and 700 series. And it's the 500 series one that can travel at 300 kph. The bullet trains operating in Japan today are of the three following categories. Nozomi, Hikari and Kodama. The Nozomi trains stop only at the most important stations and reach Osaka from Tokyo in only about two and a half hours and it's the most modern of bullet trains that serve as Nozomi. Hikari trains stop a little bit more frequently than Nozomi trains and need roughly three hours to reach Osaka from Tokyo. Kodama trains stop at all stations and they are the local trains among bullet trains. Older models of bullet trains serve as Kodama. Okay, so can I get the answers? Just give me the answers with the help of a comma. That would be great. And you don't have to, uh, you know, write question number 31, 32, 33. That's completely fine. Just give me the answers with the help of comma. The first one, the second one. Uh, 1964. Two persons, two persons stop. 12 seconds, important stations, all stations. I'm so sorry, Chahat. Um, the second one is wrong. And uh, Abhinav, the third one is wrong. The second one is wrong. Rhea has given the answers. 1964, fastest average speed. 12 seconds, most important stations, all stations. Perfect, Ria. Given the answer perfectly. Correct. All the answers are correct. And Deep has also given the correct answer. Uh, Prabhjot has also given the correct answer. Uh, but Prabhjot, the fourth answer will contain S. It is most important stations. They said that it would stop at the most important stations. Okay. And uh, still we have other answers. Yes, perfect. You cannot write any abbreviations or acronyms. So just make sure you write complete, um, uh, what we say, you write complete answer 12 seconds. Okay, please write the complete answer 12 seconds. Okay, 1964. Two, uh, second answer is fastest average speed. Now, let me just, you know, clear out the complete drawings and then I'll take you to the answer part. Yes. So, the answer is 1964, fastest average speed, uh, 12 seconds, 
Then 34 is most important stations. You, Prabhjot, you had written station. And I'm asking you to write it in plural. You had written it in the singular. You have to write it in plural. Because they said very clearly in the plural form. So write it in the plural form. Okay. And even if you go with the uh, statement as well, it actually needs a plural answer. Yes. And then 35 is all stations. It, it majority stops at all stations. So that was the answer for the last one. Okay. You must have heard about the accent as well. Yogesh. Okay. Fine. Uh, 12 seconds. Yes. You can also write the answer in this way. 12 seconds. That is in words. Okay. If you take the, um, uh, the universal way of writing the, um, uh, what we say, writing the numbers, that is the hours, seconds, minutes, it's completely fine if you take the number. But in case if you don't want to take any risk and you want to write the answer as 12, 12 seconds, then it is, that is also accepted. T-W-E-L-V-E -E is also accepted. So if one would write important stations instead of most important stations, will he or she get the marks? No, he will not get the marks. Why? I'll tell you. Because the uh, question itself said that um, Nozomi train stops at the important stations. No, most important stations. The meaning of important station is that it would be stopping at various stations. Okay, even if they are not the most important or if they are not very important, then too it will stop there. It may stop there for a minute or for two minutes, but it would. But when they talk about most important stations, that means it only stops at the major places. That is the, uh, I would say the um, uh, audio script will be played only once. Yes, of course, the audio script will be played only once. Okay. And you cannot listen to the audio script again. So very sorry for that. And here also it would not be played. So what you can do is after completing this, you can just go to, uh, you know, our YouTube channel, Alts Material. And there you can listen to the audio again. And you would definitely find that the lady, she said very clearly that it stops at most important stations. And it is three words. And most is, and most is mandatory to be written because it actually gives a difference when you just say important and when you just say most important. Okay. Ma'am, in the instructions, it is written that no more than three words or a number, but not combination of number and alphabet. Exactly. But the point is universal method. For example, if I just tell you to write the date, how will you write the date? If I ask you to write 22nd August, how will you write? You can definitely write in capital letters. So Yogesh, the point is, when you have the perfect, that is the mandatory option of writing the numbers, it's completely fine. Now let's take 1964. If you did not have any uh, instruction saying that you can write a number, if you do not have any instruction saying that you cannot write a number, and if the answer gives you the year, how will you write 1964? That's not possible. So there are a few uh, numbers which can be taken even if there is no instruction given related to that. Okay. Next is, um, yes. So if we want to write in capital letters, is it compulsory? No, that is what I said. It's not mandatory. You can write it with clarity. Just, you know, write all the letters properly so that the examiner or the evaluator doesn't get confused with your answer. And if you feel that your handwriting with the small letters is not good, go for capital letters, that's completely fine. It depends on you. If you are able to write properly with proper cl uh, clarification, then it's fine. You can go for uh, you know small letters. But if you feel that you will not be able to present it properly, then don't go for uh, small letters. Because if you take block letters, the structure is completely different for all the letters. The pattern is completely different for all the letters. So I would suggest go for block letters if your handwriting is really not good. Okay. Now let's go for the next um, note completion task. And here I would not be uh, making you understand related to anything because already I have explained you the strategy. So it depends on you 
which particular word will be your keyword you need to find out and you have to make sure that you uh, you know get the correct keywords and at the end you should also get the correct answers as well so listen to the uh, uh, listen to the audio the recording properly okay um now i would request the participants not to ask any question i'll just answer the last one and then i'll close the chat box abey it is written can we strike and write the rewrite the answer but why do you want to strike and rewrite it you are going to write the answers with pencil so erase it and then write you don't have to do this you can just erase the answer or you can erase the content that you feel is incorrect and you can write it again because you are going to write with the help of pencil only pencil is allowed during the paper based examination you will not be allowed to take any pen or any other stationery other than a pencil eraser and a sharpener why sharpener because you will not be allowed to use those lead pencils or you know those uh, uh, different types of pencils as well so it is better that you go with the normal pencil the normal old traditional style of pencil yes and you you only will be allowed to take the eraser and the sharpener also make sure that you you know uh, take out the covers of those erasers and sharpeners as well even that is also not allowed okay they are very strict with the um, uh, what we say they are very strict with their uh, rules and regulations and that is why it is it is very important that you follow that okay now 30 seconds have started please go through the questions i'll start playing the audio exactly normal old traditional pencils now please focus on the questions you have only 15 seconds okay i'm going to play the audio now to 27 you have some time again to read the question so please do that Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hello there. Do you work in the computer room? Yes, I do. Can I help you? Well, I'm a first year and I know that I'll need to use the computer room for my work as I don't have a computer of my own. So I thought I'd get down here and see what I have to do in order to get time on one of the university's computers. Okay. Uh there are four computer labs open to undergraduates. The others can only be used by the staff and postgraduates. The names of the four labs you can use are Wimborne, Franklin, Salisbury and Court. Wimborne and Court are in this building, the Johnson building. Franklin is in the computer sciences building and Salisbury is in the library. So I can use them whenever I like. Well, you can use them, but not whenever you like. As you can imagine, they're in quite a lot of demand, so you have to reserve your time on a computer. In each of the labs there is a reservation book and you can reserve your time on a computer in that for 2 hours daily. If a computer is free though, you can go on it straight away. It's quite straightforward, but be sure to always write your name in the reservation book in pen or someone can rub it out and put their name in instead. Oh my god, does that really happen? I'm afraid so, and far more often than you would think. When people are stressed about their assignments, they'd do anything to get some time on the computers. Better not try it yourself though or you'll be banned from the computers for the rest of the academic year and your password and username will be taken away. That reminds me, I've got to get a username and password. How do I go about that then? Well, what I'll do is to pass you over to my colleague Jane as she's in charge of all that. Jane? Yes, Dave. I've got a new student here wanting to find out about usernames and passwords. Can you help him out with that? Yeah, sure. Hi there. Hi. Well, it's a straightforward process. First of all, tell me your name, and I'll type it into the system. James Smith. Right. Let me do that. You see, all students are automatically given a username, and then they just choose a password themselves. Okay. So your username is James Smith two. 
That's all small case. That means there must be more than one of you at the university at the moment. Well, what do you want your password to be? I think I'll choose biology, as that's the subject that I'm studying. Though my girlfriend Mary will be upset that it's not her name I'm using. Well, that's all done. You can now use any of the four undergraduate computer labs. By the way, can I print out stuff at the labs? Yes, you can, but sometimes it's not quick. When you print, it goes into a queue and it'll be left in a tray in Franklin, as that's where all the main printers are. The good bit is that, although last year it cost three pence per page, now it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, so can I have the answers, please? Can I have the answers? See? Uh, Abhay, I told you, even if I've given the answers, I've showed the answers, it becomes difficult for many to be much attentive. But still, Muskan, you can give the answers. The number of answers that you have got correctly or you must have listened to it and it was not quick. It was actually, uh, they did not, you know, uh, make you go here and there. It was exactly uh, to the part, staff, library, two hours, biology, three per page. No, 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 no. Um, Okay, uh, staff, library, two hours, pen, biology, try, nothing. Not try. No, not try. Then Jasandeep has given the answer, staff, library, two hours in a pen. In a pen will not be an answer. Please just see the instruction. It's two words. Write in two words. Okay, not more than two words. So in a pen is wrong. You can go for in pen. That is completely correct. Uh, Lovepreet has given the answer, staffs. Why do you want to write staffs? That's staff. You cannot say one staff or two staff or three staff. It is already staff. So staff is a neutral word. You can take it as singular. You can take it as plural. You don't need to add S there. Okay. So we'll be taking staff, library, uh, two hours, uh, in pen. You have to write in pen. Biology is the password and nothing. Yes, exactly. The answer for the last one, 27, is nothing because they said that earlier it used to cost three per page, but now it, it doesn't cost you anything. It does not cost you anything is going to be a long answer. You can also write it as nothing. So the answer is nothing. Okay. So, yes, three pounds. No, that is what is the point. Earlier it was three pounds, but now it doesn't cost you anything. So, the answer is nothing. And uh, two hours. Why do you want to write two hours completely in words when you have the option of taking it as a, uh, as a combination? You can write it in combination, so that's completely fine. It's actually tray, exactly. Um, the uh, 24, sorry, the 26th one is tray. 26th one is tray. Yes. Uh, Yash has given all the correct answers. Staff, library, two hours, in pen, biology, tray, nothing. So all the correct answers. Yash has given all the correct answers perfectly written. Abay has written, I think, 20, uh, 27. I missed 22, 23, and 24 because of you, ma'am. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Acha, okay. I didn't do that. It was you who started. Okay, fine. I'm so sorry for that. But that's okay, right? Now, let me take you to the answers. The answer is 21 staff, 22 library, 23 two hours, 24 in pen, 25 biology, 26 tray, 27, nothing. But again, this is called as distracting. Why did you get distracted? You should have focused on the audio, right? I did not speak up anything. I didn't say anything. It was just a comment in the chat box. When the audio is played, you should have closed the chat box. Simple, okay? Now, let's go. Uh, can I use pen during listening? No, that is, is what we discussed. When you go to the... Um, examination hall 
you will not be allowed to use anything other than pencil eraser and sharpener only these three stationery will be allowed inside the examination hall even you could not be allowed to take your pouch as well no pouch in which you keep your uh, uh, stationery nothing will be allowed you don't need a scale as well because scale is also not required so the only requirement is pencil eraser and sharpener that's it okay now coming to the main thing we have pencil can i use on this listening on this listening how can you use it on this listening how can you use pencil on this listening i didn't understand um on this listening i i didn't get means that part which part the question part that is in the paper based examination or you are talking about computer based examination if you are going to attend a computer based exam computer based exam you don't have to use pencil uh in the computer based exam you cannot use pencil okay you don't need a pencil because in the computer based exam you will be typing the answers and the answers would be submitted you don't have to transfer the answers as well it is just going to be typing the answers okay so you have to use your mouse and the keyboard no stationery uh, to be used you can take a pencil to make notes because you will have a keypad or you will have a sheet of paper you can make notes but you have to be very quick because there also you will not be able to listen to the audio again and even you will not be able to go to the previous parts as well previous sections as well so whatever question you see you have to be very attentively giving the answers on the spot so don't make this mistake please computer based exam and paper based exam are completely different paper based at least you can go for uh, you know at least you can go to the previous pages but here it's not possible okay and you cannot use a pencil on the screen you can't do that even you cannot use the annotate way that i did you cannot do that okay so you have to make sure that you uh, focus you you be attentive you be a multitasker at that at this point of time yes okay next is uh, we have the promo of ebooks wherein we have the latest test from august to november we also have the uh, combo that is listening reading writing speaking writing task 1 and writing task 2 so in case if you feel that you would like to practice by yourself you can buy these ebooks you just have to log in to um, store.altsmaterial.com i'll just write that in the chat box store.store.altsmaterial.com uh, store and you can visit this website you can just go to this website and make sure that it is you go through the uh, materials just to see what is there inside and if you feel that uh, you know uh, in case if like you know you want to uh, what we say you would like to buy these books then you can just go to this website okay uh somina datta you have asked that i'm so sorry i i missed out your um, i missed your uh, can you share your number i have to ask you something about subscription okay uh what you can do is somina datta let me just share a google form okay just fill out that form and uh the team member will call you related to the the team member will call you and they will give you all the details that you require is that okay somnath datta you don't have to mention your number as well here it's just that you have to i've i've sent the form in the chat box so you can just fill up this form my team member would call you and you can ask them any questions related to the subscription or the way if you want to go for the uh, demo session or you would like to take up the live sessions you can definitely go for it clear now let's move on to the next section we have form completion as you can see the question starts from question number 1 it ends by question number 5 so uh, yes um generally form completion comes in the first section because there two people would be communicating with each other one 
seeking the information and one giving the information okay so when you give any kind of information about yourself the personal details that generally comes in the section 1 and this particular part is always going to be easy because they directly ask the important things that is for example they would clearly say that for how much time or what would be the duration of the pass that the person wants to apply then they would say it would it would be for one month so directly you have the answer as one month now one main instruction that i would like to give you you can see a small box right after the heading bus pass application form you can see an example given this is an older format of the question paper nowadays examples are not given okay you will not find any example in any section so the point is it will directly start from the questions so no example um uh, uh, you just have to uh, write the correct answer listening to the audio right from the first question the other thing is complete the form below the instruction is write no more than 3 words or some numbers here some numbers are taken with words because again i would say they are universal way of writing the numbers so that's completely fine you can write it clear i feel this is completely clear now let me just give you some idea what you can predict with the answer uh when you take the first one it actually talks about name name always has first name and the last name first name is already given you are going to expect the last name clear you are going to expect the last name here next is address so when they have given 45 it must be the house number sorry house uh, it okay this is the house number and this is the house name or the name of the street okay name of the street name of the society name of the apartments so generally it is going to be the name next is postcode if you consider the postcode of the other countries that is out of india in india we have the postcode only with the numbers but if i take the postcode of the other countries then they involve a few letters and the numbers okay so again it's a combination but it is not exactly the word it is not exactly the word so it will be considered as number so you have to write it in the way uh it it will be described in the way as a few letters and the numbers okay no space or nothing is required you can write all together the letters and the numbers can be written together next part is date of birth is clearly given 13th may 1982 telephone number telephone number also you know that you can write it continuously might be for zero they may give you as o like you know if if i talk about 6045 then they may say that 6045 it can be said in that way so you have to take o as zero right next is a uh, university card shown yes zones required so for which zone actually the candidate requires the pass only to those zones this pass would be applicable okay so this is a way how you have to go with the um questions and you listen to the answers so let's move on to the next section i'm going to play the audio a 6 month bus pass or a year pass oh just a month pass please So, one month is the correct answer. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as the recording is not played twice. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to five. Good morning. I'm here to get a student bus pass, please. Of course, madam. Do you want to buy a month bus pass, a six-month bus pass, or a year pass? Oh, just a month pass, please. Right then. I'll just have to take a few details. Yes, of course. First of all, what's your name? Natalie Jameson. And how do you spell Jameson? J A M E S O N. Thank you. And what's your address? 
45 Forest Avenue, Newlands, Adelaide. Is that forest with one R or two R's? Just one. And what's the postcode, please? Oh yes, it's 8490. Thanks. Now, what's your date of birth, if you don't mind me asking? Not at all. It's the 13th of May, 1982. I also need to know your telephone number here in Adelaide. OK. I just need to check that, as I only moved here last week. Now, where is it? Here we are. It's 6249-7152. Do you need a code or anything? Oh, no, that's OK, thank you. Can I see your university card, please? Yes, here it is. Good, that's fine. Now, for which zone do you need a pass? Well, I'm not sure. I was hoping you'd be able to help me, as I don't really know my way around here yet. As you know, I live in Newlands, and I have to get to the university campus in the centre of town every day. Well, the university is in Zone 1, and Newlands has two zones. The side nearer to the town centre is Zone 5, but the far side is Zone 6. What road is it that you live in again? Forest Avenue. Let's see on this map. There it is. The nearest bus stop is in Zone 5. That's lucky. Zones 1 to 6 are $15 more expensive. Great. Make the pass out for Zones 1 to 5 then, please. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. We are not going to do 6 to 10, so yes. Can I have the answers, please? Can I have the answers? This was very easy. Okay. The answers are Jameson, First Avenue, 8499. Postcode. Only this much? 8499? Uh, 62497152. Perfect. Zone 5. No. It's actually, she said, I will go for. Zone 1 to 5. So you can write 1 to 5 or 1 hyphen 5. That's also correct. 1 to 5. Why do you want to write 1 to 5? Why do you want to write in that way? This is, you need to write it in um, 1 to 5 in the number. You don't have to write it in 1 to 5. Okay, Jameson, Forest Avenue. What what was the uh, thing? Uh, First Avenue. Okay, no, it's it's not First Avenue. Forest Avenue, 8490, What is the answer? 8490 or 8499? 6249-7912. No, 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 no. 7912 is wrong. Okay. Let's go to the correct answer. The answers are... Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. The answers are Jameson... She said Jameson. It's not Jameson. It's Jameson. And the second one is Forest Avenue. The third one is 8490. Fourth one is 62497152. And the last one is 125. Or you can write it as 1T025. That's completely okay. Right? You can write it in this way as well. So uh, the first answer is Jameson. And the last answer is one, two, five. Exactly. Yes. So um, now, voice in Jameson word like N. No, it was Jameson. She said very clearly Jameson. Jameson. Okay. So not to worry. That's completely fine. It happens, Hema. That is what is the main focus that I described. You should focus on, uh, you should focus on the pronunciation. 45 Forest Avenue. <coughs> so sorry. Second one is Forest Avenue. She said um, 45 Forest Avenue. Right. And it is Jameson. J-A-M-E-S-O-N. Jameson. M-E. It's not N-E. Okay. Right. Next. Let's move on to the next part. Here. Now the next part is table completion. But I've taken a different type of table completion, which you can 
uh, you know, find it in the exam, but in the very rare cases, but still you should be knowing about it. If I take it as a completion task, then definitely you have done already three completion tasks and no need to do it again. So let's take a different one. Here we have a table and 31, 32, 33, 34 has to be filled with the correct letter. Okay, it has to be filled with the correct letter. So the options are, you need to take the options from the box that is given, the roles. Paid fishermen for unidentified finds, then caught a strange looking fish, contacted scientists in Indonesia, photographed a, um, a solanket seen by accident, first recognized the solanket for what it was, bought a specimen of a solanket in a market. Okay, now here, each and every um, scientist has described something. You will find only person describing about all the scientists and their roles. What did they do? Okay, and what was their contribution? So what you need to do is, you need to listen to the conversation properly and be attentive when they talk about particular scientists. For example, if they're talking about Captain Goosen, listen to that uh, conversation very carefully and find the answer. Then they may talk about Dr. Mark Erdman. Here, it will not go in the sequence. Very truly speaking, it will not go in the sequence. It may go here and there. Because they may talk about any individual anytime. Okay? So, listen to the audio very carefully and then give the answer. You just have to give the answer with the help of the correct letter. Okay? Clear? Might be you will not be able to listen to the exact words. They have paraphrased the roles. They have paraphrased the responsibilities and you have to be very good with the synonyms as well. So now let's start this particular activity. Your 30 seconds has started. Read the roles again. Read the name of the individuals again. And then after the time gets completed, I'll start the audio. Okay. Finding a dinosaur walking around today, over 85 million years after it went extinct. The story began a few days before Christmas in 1938, when the first living coelacanth was discovered off the east coast of South Africa, at the mouth of the Chalumna River. The fish was caught in a shark gill net by Captain Goosen and his crew, who, recognizing the bizarre nature of their catch, alerted the local museum in the small South African town of East London. The director of the East London Museum at the time was Miss Marjorie Courtney Latimer, after whom the coelacanth was eventually named. Miss Courtney Latimer offered bounties to fishermen for unfamiliar fish. It was Miss Courtney Latimer who alerted the prominent South African ichthyologist Dr. J. L. B. Smith, who initially identified the fish and subsequently inform the world about this amazing discovery. This first coelacanth led to the discovery of the first documented population off the remote Comoros Islands between the mainland of Africa and Madagascar. For 60 years, this was presumed to be the only coelacanth population in existence. Originally, it was a concern that the coelacanth might have a very limited range and that overfishing along the Comoros Islands might wipe it out. However, scientists were amazed when, on July the 30th, 1998, an American scientist discovered a coelacanth population in Indonesia. Dr. Mark Erdman was on a honeymoon trip to the area investigating a coral reef research site when he spotted a strange fish being wheeled into the fish market. He recognized the fish as a coelacanth and snapped a picture before it was sold. Dr. Erdman's subsequent research revealed that the people from Sulawesi had a name for it, Raja, King of the Sea. The Sulawesi Silicanth colony 
is about 10,000 kilometers east of where the coelacanths were previously known to occur in the Western Indian Ocean. Both Sulawesi and Comoros coelacanths are quite different from all other living fish. But perhaps the most interesting feature of the coelacanth is that it has paired lobed fins, which move in a similar fashion to our arms and legs. Coelacanth. Okay, so what are the correct answers? You just have to write the correct letter and nothing else. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Smith is A. Uh, and uh, Majority Courtney Latimer is F. B, D, E. 32 is B. 33 is D. And 34 is E. Okay. Are you sure? I've got the answers only from two candidates. Abhinav and Muskan. So I'll wait for the other participants also to give the answer. Please, if you can give the answers. Can you give the answers? A, B, dash, E. <laughs> Achha. A, B, dash, E. Dilpreet. E, A, F, B. Okay. E, e is for uh, Smith. First, recognize the silicon for what it was. And A, a is... Um, Latimer, paid fisherman for unidentified finds. E A B F. All are confused, is it? Jasmeet has given the answers as E A B F. Okay. What do you want me to do? Shall I give the correct answers? A F A F B B A B E F. Oh God. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm giving the correct answers. The answers are E A D B. E A D B. It was very clearly said that, let me just take it to the previous part, E A D B. So when I take it previously, okay. So Smith actually said that he recognized the silicon for what it was. That is, what it was means which species it was okay and and he gave the name only one wrong one. very good so he gave the name what is it it is from the category of fishes or from the category of mammals what it was so he actually recognized silicon for what it was okay and then uh the next one is uh majority courtney latimer right so, Majori Kotni Latimer is, um, he gave the answer as a paid fisherman. No, sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, paid fisherman for the unidentified finds. So, that is, he made sure that the fishermen get paid for the uh, uh, species, that is the unidentified species which were not scientifically recognized. Next is, he, the 33 is actually, who, who it was, 33? Ah, Edmund, yes. Edmund actually, he gave the answer as, um, sorry, so, okay. Before that, before that, I had something in my mind. Which particular uh, scientist did you listen to? Which particular scientist did you listen to? Which was the question number that you gave the answer first? Was it 31, 32, 33, or 34? Which was the answer that you found first? 34, exactly. So first they described about Captain Hussein. Clearly they said that it was given by Captain Hussein and 34. And then he clearly talked about Smith. And then he came to Latimer and then he went. The last one was Adman. Right? Dr. Mark Adman. Okay? Now. When we go for the answers, these are the correct answers. You all know what are the correct answers. Any questions related to these? Generally, the table completion is, again, the same type of completion task that is with the fill in the blanks. But many times, you can also find this as well. You may have options and you just have to, uh, you know, match the correct answer. Any tricks for solving these type of questions? I said very clearly in the starting itself, 
read the questions properly, understand and predict what type of answers could come. And also you should be very much comfortable with paraphrasing, finding the synonyms and practicing. Do much of practicing so that you become very familiar with these types of questions and it becomes easy for you to understand the accents. Once you start understanding the accents, that's it. You will not come down uh, 40. I would guess you will not come down 40. Right? You will always be uh, getting 40 out of 40 because I have, I personally have my students from IELTS material who have received 40 out of 40 in listening and reading. Who have got 40 out of 40 in listening and reading applying the strategies perfectly and they follow each and every technique that we have advised them and they get 40 out of 40 in listening and reading. We do have those scores as well. So that is why I would suggest you in case if you are planning, you're a beginner, you want to learn these strategies of listening and reading, even for the writings and speaking as well, I would just tell you that go for the one-on-one uh, -on -one live sessions one-on-one -on -one live session is taking up the classes with our expert trainers, band nine trainers, certified trainers, and they would help you in getting your desired bands and that too in first attempt. This is what I every time repeat in first attempt because the main concern is to complete the IELTS examination in one go with flying colors. So please do that. Don't waste your time. Just go for the uh, sessions and make sure that you finish your IELTS examination in one month. That's it. Understand the strategy properly and keep on practicing yourself as well. You would get ebooks, that is, the ebooks which you are planning to buy. You would get those ebooks if you are registering with us for the one on one live sessions. So you don't have to go for the ebooks. And in those ebooks, you will find more than 30 tests. More than 30 tests is, I would say, more than enough to practice. Uh, reading, listening, and you have many sample answers related to writings where you understand the structure and also the speakings. You would take many writings and speakings with your expert trainer as well. They would give you the evaluations, the improvements, and working on those improvements will help you get your desired advance. Clear? Now, let's take two minutes. If you have any questions related to today's session or anything related to listening module, you can go ahead. I would answer those questions. I feel very comfortable with option types of questions like these instead of others. Oh God. Then I guess you should actually start doing that. But don't, don't do this. You will not be finding options uh, everywhere. You will not be finding options everywhere. So please, please don't uh, you know, apply that. Also, in case if you would like to go for the live uh, classes or for the demos, I've sent a Google form. You can just fill up that form, send in your details and uh, the team member will call you and give you the rest of the details how you can proceed with the classes. Okay. Bye, Jasmeet. Bye. So this is the end of our session. And in case if you have any other question, you can definitely go ahead or uh, we'll meet tomorrow. Please do attend the session from tomorrow. It's going to be writing and many struggle with writing. Yes. Bye, Chahat. Bye. So any other question, if you have, you can ask me. Oh, God. Dilpreet, you have exam and it has been... Um, okay. But that's completely fine. You can just, uh, you know, take up a few... Uh, what we say? Uh, okay, you cannot do that as well. All the best for the exam. This is what I can say because you have only one or two days, day after tomorrow. Okay, so you have only one day tomorrow. So just focus on uh, a few sample answers. Like, right? How many listening section will there be in exam? Four. You will have four listening sections. So Minak, you will have four listening sections. 40 questions in the listening module. And each section has 10 questions. So altogether, 40 questions. Ma'am, please tell me about map questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, map questions, what you can do is, so here you can just go to the uh, previous videos. Uh, we have our channel, YouTube channel, and you can go to that channel. 
and you can um, you know watch those videos related to strategies for MCQ and map labeling. And that was, I guess, it was day six or day seven. Yes, it was day seven. Sorry, it was day seven. So you just have to scroll to the number of uh, you know live sessions, and you can. Uh, when do you have Vedika? Uh, you have a demo session from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Is it today? Uh, is it today? Vedika, is it today? Bye, Tabassum. Uh, Vedika, if it is today, then please uh, just, you know, just call the uh, team member, the one who has added you in the uh, WhatsApp group. Yes. So please call the team member who has added you in the WhatsApp group. Okay. Thank you so much, Dilpreet. Thank you so much. All the best for your exam. So Vedika, please call the uh, team member who actually has added you in the group. Yes. So they would, uh, you know, give you the link. They would send you the link. So don't worry. Your demo session will be conducted at the uh, given time. And uh, they'll send you the link. So just, just send a message in the link, sorry, in the WhatsApp group asking for the link. Okay. Uh, YouTube link, please, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let me just send you the link. 